know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. Hello and welcome to this special episode of Tales and Trails. I'm Minnie Menon and we are here live from one of the most famous Harappan sites in the Indian subcontinent, Lothal. And joining me today is Dr. Vasant Shinde, a man in the news, uh, especially after the report on the Rakhigari DNA is just out. And uh, Dr. Shinde, thanks so much for joining us today. And what a lovely place to actually have a conversation on the Rakhigari DNA, because of course Rakhigari is not accessible right now. But this is perhaps one of the most cosmopolitan cities of the ancient Harappans, right. given that it was uh, the oldest port in the world, perhaps. Yes, yes, yes. Say the Harappan, you know, uh, civilization was developed because people of, you know, maybe different, you know, groups, you know, came together yeah. and, you know, they have developed this particular civilization. Of course, you know, there is a very strong uh, South Asian factor, but, uh, you know, it was a cosmopolitan, you know, civilization. And, uh, you know, the diversity that, you know, it was present in fact during the Harappan times, that was used for the welfare of the people in fact for the development of the cities and mm. towns. Mm. So that is a beauty in fact, you know, which is, you know, very important and something we should learn from, you know, this yeah. history. And, you know, it was so uh, multicultural in many Multi, senses. Yeah, exactly. It was amazing. But we've got lots of questions for you on that. No, no, that is true. But let, let's start by talking about this. Tell us how it would have looked because there are some concerns about whether this was really a dock or not. Right. But, you know, you've seen the archaeology reports over right, here. Right. What would it look, have looked at? Because the river is slightly further on. Yeah, river is maybe around maybe three to four kilometers from here. Mm -hmm. And it is a Ghogao, the river called Ghogao. And, uh, you know, the sea is maybe roughly 20 kilometers from here. Mm. So the sea water, in fact, you know, used to come during the high tidal period up to this part. And the Harappans have developed this particular, you know, river and port, mainly because of this particular advantage that, you know, the, you know, ship used to come during the high tidal period and they used to go, go back when the sea starts receding. Now, this particular basin that you are seeing here, in fact, SRO was of the firm belief that it is a dockyard come port. I will tell you why you know, he was uh, convinced about the function of this particular structure. But then there are some people you know, who say that no, no, this could be simply uh, you know, the uh, structure for storing sweet water, etc. But there was no need because you know, the river is, you know, sweet water river is very close. And the Harappans have built, in fact, if you move around the site, mm. you'll see a lot of whales, in fact. So Harappans sure. have done a lot of whales here also. Why SRA was of the firm opinion that, you know, this was a port? Because there was an opening, in fact. You know, he has, it is not visible now, mm. but there is an opening, big opening on that side of this structure, which is, you know, towards this, you know, towards the river. And here, in fact, you know, you can see, in fact, you know, there was a, you know, maybe a small channel. So as and when it required, in fact, you know, the water can come in, along with that the ships can come in. And so with the tide they would have come in and yeah, yeah. moved out. And yeah. within, some, sometimes the ships were also repaired here. So that time you know, they could have emptied this particular structure by using this particular channel. Yeah. And then of course you know, they turn upside down. What we see of the site of Lothal today is just 10% of what would have been a thriving city. Looked at from the sky, just after the rains, you can see just how spectacular it is, surrounded by water as it is. One of the earliest Harappan sites discovered on the Indian side after partition, Lothal was excavated by archaeologist S. R. Rao in the 1950s. You will find a granary adjoining the dock, a well section set of workshops or quarters with toilets, drains, wells, and a citadel area. But you know, looking at these bricks, they could have well been contemporary. I mean, the fact that they are so old, you know, over, uh, what, 4,000 years old. Right, I yes. mean, that's quite spectacular. Yeah, yeah. It's clear, They're in proper structure. ratio, you know, one is to two is to three or one is to two is to four. So that, you know, they can undertake this type of, you know, this type of construction in geometric, you know, pattern. Mm. So that is the reason they have done that. And here they have followed the typical, what we today call as the English bond. Mm. 
you know one brick is placed horizontal next brick is vertical mm. and that method is being followed even today we are following the same method. So right now we are at the citadel level then you have the burial and you have the lower town. Yes uh, you have the you know maybe some kind of uh, maybe manufacturing area here mm. and lower town on that side. And how big would this place have been? I mean, this is around uh, 18 to 20 hectare. Mm. So, you know, mid, you know, medium size Harappan town, this can be called. Mm. And this was specialized, you know, this was the Harappan port. There might have been yeah, a yeah. lot else there in are the lot, Yeah, yeah, a lot of settlements around. Mm. In Savarashtra itself, the archaeologists have discovered nearly 450 settlements. In its heydays, Lothal attracted traders from all over the known world and the subcontinent. So it was a good place to sit down with Dr. Shinde and talk of what has been a sensational headline grabber. The much publicized report on the DNA results of the Rakhi Gadi skeleton. Dr. Shinde, who headed the project, has been accused of contradicting a report he was part of, which coincidentally came out on the same day as his Rakhigari report. So what did the Rakhigari DNA analysis report really say? It said that the Harappans are the ancestors of modern South Asians. This, most papers concluded, debunked the Aryan invasion theory, leading others to question it and raise issues with the intent of the report. So in the midst of this media rumble, what is the actual story? I'm going to cut to the chase and ask you the, the first question on the Rakhigari DNA. You know, it's, the report is just out yeah. and uh, people have questioned the veracity of it. Right. And they have said that you've contradicted your own research uh, mm. done with, which was published in the science magazine. What do you say to that? criticism no they both the reports you know science and the sale was published on the same day in fact okay but the science paper does not contain the uh, the results of Rakhi Gadi because you know we wanted to publish that separately now people those who make comments on these particular you know reports I think you know, for how much they have read I don't know and if they have read how much they have understood that is not clear at no stage you know we say that you no know, people from outside you know did not come here we never say that people were always coming here they were interacting with you know people you know in south asia and the south asian the you know people right from the beginning of the settled life you know they always you know were interacting with people from outside and they used their you know you know the contacts for the development mm -hmm. that is quite clear now what we say here you know is that uh, you know, there are two waves rather. One is that you know that you know transformation was happening during the you know end of the hunting and stage, maybe mm -hmm. around 12,000 BC. And clearly, you know, it was revealed that you know the Harappan gene is from the hunting gathering stage. People were always here. This region was never, never, you know, without any, you know. And we have people. Neolithic sites uh, we have and Mesolithic, Upper Paleolithic Mesolithic sites. sites Neolithic you know, from sites. Upper Paleolithic yeah, sites. Yeah. Uh, but I want to take a break over there because I've read yes. both the reports yes. and I haven't commented on what was being said because right. I really think that you need sanity, you need to see reason on both sides right. And, right. and, you know, comment with, uh, with information. Right. So I, I think the confusion was on the very fact that you said that there mm. were actually two waves that you're looking at. Mm. And the confusion was on the dates of these waves and right. what you had said. Right. So the first wave is around 12,000 to 10,000 BCE mm. where there is a movement happening. Now this movement is possibly the hunter gatherers, the pastoralists yes. becoming, starting of farming etc mm. happens in this period. Right. And there's clear evidence that the movement also came into the South Asia belt right. and the Harappans would have been part of that full um, populace where mm. there was a lot of intermixing. Right. Right? Yes. When it comes to the first uh, stage, what is interesting that you now the hunter gatherers, now they slowly now they are transforming into agricultural community. And when you know that was happening, you know, we can see that clearly two, you know, maybe branches branching out from one, you know, line. So what from one branch, you know, the early farmers or the ancient farmers of 
Iran, you know, they mm. evolved. Mm. And from the other branch, you know, the farmers of South Asia evolved. And both have separate ancestry. That is quite clear. So then, you know, these two groups evolved. And then they, both of them were simultaneously developing. So from hunting gathering, they became agricultural communities. They started domestication of plant and animal. And then also they started establishing the villages. So it, it was happening at both the sides. But once they have established the villages, then the, the needs of the people began to increase. They started producing you know, various crops, maybe various you know, implements required for you know, various you know, occupation that you know, they were undertaking. So naturally, you know, they started you know, importing raw material, which is not locally available. So they started developing contact with different regions. Mm. So right from the beginning of settled life, we have the settled life in this part goes back to 7000 BC mm. at the site of Mehrgarh. So right from, the, from that stage, if you look at the evidence of the burial found in the earliest stage, we have a lot of you know, ornaments there you know, developed and you know, produced by the early farmers here. So that time the contact was, ha was happening. Okay. And they, you know, there was a movement of the people on both the regions. If you were to imagine it, out of Africa, they're moving in waves. In waves. There are trigger points happening in there. There are exactly, yes. flashes of technology that are coming in. Yes. So there's agriculture that's happening. Yes. Uh, pastoralists are coming. And there is this intermingling, this whole area, there is an intermingling. Once they have begun the settled life here, both in, you know, in Iran as well as here, then people started innovating their own material culture. So the same people who are developing these cultural elements here, they have transformed into Harappan culture, maybe around 5,000, 5,500 BC. And then Harappan culture then was constantly you know, evolving from early Harappan to the you know, so-called the mature and the, Harappan. And the contacts with the And then the contacts the were moving in fact, they were happening constantly. So we are not denying the you know, contact. Mm. We are not denying that you know, the, you know, the population was heterogeneous right from the beginning. Mm. But the ancestry has not changed. Suppose you know, people had come in large you know, number, in large horde, and if they have replaced the population, that is not really happening. That is not happening. Is so the base yes, is the same. Yes, the base same. is same, yes. Okay. But let's talk about the actual confusion, yes. which is the more immediate concern. Yes. So the DNA age is about, uh, the, the age of the skeleton whose DNA you found is about 2300 BC. 2400 BC. 2400. Mm. Now there is a second wave, the Yamanaya wave that it is called, mm. around 2000 to 1700, where mm. the Indo-Europeans as we know it today, where the linguistic, you know, connections are between Iran, between Latin, between Sanskrit, etc. Yes. That wave happens only around 2000 to 1700. So it would have been much after this lady of Rakhi Gadi whose DNA you have found? See, the wave, uh, I will rather not use the word wave. The movement was happening right from the early stage, hmm. right from the beginning of the Harappan culture. And slowly as Harappan culture was prospering, becoming more you know, prosperous, there was more contact. And then, you know, after, you know, that continues, and after maybe decline of the Harappans, it continued over larger area in North India. So we can see that. Mm. So that does not mean that you know people were suddenly coming in a wave mm. and they were replacing. That is not happening. Mm. So that is very clear in fact you know, in our DNA. Mm. And the DNA that we have found in that particular woman, that clearly indicates the ancestry. And you know what is our you know maybe ancestry, that is also clearly you know revealed by that particular skeletal mm. So Till today, that ancestry continues. Suppose some people had come from an outside in a wave, migration or, or maybe some kind of maybe invasion, then they could have replaced both in fact the you know ancestry here and the material culture also. But you're talking what you're talking about is it a it's a gradual amalgamation a gradual of different uh, yes. different uh, communities or yes. different um, racial. Uh, combinations yes. that has happened over a period of time, right? right? right, right. But there is a, a controversy uh, around the R1A DNA, mm. which is seen as uh, what differentiates the ANI from the ASI, for instance. Yes. What accounts for that differentiation? See, the North India uh, is closer to the you know, Central Asian region. So when the, the contact was you know, developed during the maybe you know, after the decline of the Harappans, more contact, 
then naturally the north india you know, where the harappans had started moving in fact in the regional you know uh, cultures there you know we see the preservation of this you know some of the elements of this steppe region mm. so r1 a1 is a you know small gene in fact found in the population of that region mm. so that we we find in fact in the population of the north indians more because mm. the north india was closer but that has not again as i say that you know that has not replaced the ancestry of the people so that mingling so the happening r1 right a1 the, the r1 a1 is a limited gene it's not limited gene exactly it's, it's no. not the overarching gene mm, exactly it is not certainly yes so okay. people need to understand that Mm. So we never deny that you know that you know the you know people coming from outside region and having contact with the Indian you know people that is happening right from the beginning. At some stage maybe it is more, some stage it is less. Mm. That is the only difference. Mm. The difference of the degree only. Mm. So you know most archaeologists and I've spoken to a lot of historians and archaeologists. They are saying what's the big deal about this debate? You know, mm. it's the first time we've got DNA from a skeleton of that period. It's right. fantastic. There's so much to learn about it. Yes. And somewhere we are mixing up a whole lot of issues and looking as though the movement of the Indo-Europeans was a one-time event, which is catastrophic, which is all debates that happened many, many decades ago. I mean, we've moved on from yes, that. Right. But I'm going to talk about that report. One of the largest reports was the report of the 523 yes. uh, you know uh, skeletons that were found across a large area right. what does that indicate because that has led people to misquote you as i see it yes. saying that you said that the sanskrit language and indo-european uh, movement happened out of harappa to the rest of the world i mean please clarify no, for no. us yeah yeah this is very important in fact why i said that in fact and that was probably you no know, it happened probably you know during the you know the peak period of the Harappan culture, huh. maybe around maybe in the middle of the third millennium BC. Now, why I say that? Firstly, you know we have no idea about from where the Indo-European language has come to Indian subcontinent. Nobody has explained that properly. Secondly, what is the date of the origin of the Indo-Europeans? We do not know. Hmm. And as and when people were coming here and people were going from here to there, there is always bound to be you know maybe spread of languages also. The Harappans, I say that you know that there is no discontinuity continuity in the ancestry of the people from maybe beginning of the settled life from 7000 BC to the end of the Harappan culture. So that means the same people have continued. And looking at the development that the Harappans have done, so they were the first town planners in fact in the world. Hmm. Yeah. And then so many new ideas have been you know have been developed by the Harappans. Which even today, you know, we envy. In fact, you know, we do not, you know, really understand you know, how the Harappans have done that, the type of water, you know, management system, yeah. water harvesting. So what I say that you know that the Harappans were so advanced, and they needed some language certainly. So why not, you know, Harappans could have spoken even the Sanskrit language. But you know, uh, the problem is that there is no evidence of that. That is no, no. that is an opinion. I, I never say that it is a conclusion. I said that this that is a possibility. That could have been. That okay, that, that's just a guess. That is that, a guess. Okay. Yes, I never but, say that. I, I am. We are establishing this fact. Yeah, because but there, there is, is a no possibility. Way of yeah, that. there is a possibility that why not you know the Harappan have developed. It, it could be anything. Exactly. But that's not uh, that's not. That is not the conclusion. conclusion. Of course. But you know what I've asked you before is one skeleton, one DNA sample yes. in a civilization that was on from pre to mature to decline three thousand five hundred years. Yes. It's unbelievable that that one DNA could give us so much of information, which is conclusive. Yes. So, do you agree that this is just the tip of the iceberg, and a lot more needs to be done? This is just the beginning. Yeah. In fact, I said that during the press conference, that we know that the data is very small. This is just the beginning, and we have to pick up from this point now. And you know, we have to really you know understand a lot about the you know ancient population. Like you know, during the Harappans also, there may be different groups. Because in Lothal itself, I was I was looking at the literature of Lothal. Yes. They found proto australide uh, They found uh, evidence of alpine race. They found al evidence of the Mediterranean stock. So I mean, this was a cosmopolitan city, and that's how I've yes. introduced it. I yes, mean, so yes. there is no way that no way. one particular person's DNA is conclusive for a large period like this. No, 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 certainly not. Only thing that you now we are talking about from this particular culture remain, we can talk about the ancestry of the people here, and that for you know even from one you know we can talk about the ancestry, which is important, and then you know diversity. I didn't understand that. How can you find the ancestry from one see, person? See, from one person, you know this ancestry of that particular woman, 
you know it is continuation from 12000 BC and we have you know compared with you know many skeletal remains outside the Harappan region also and then that ancestry continues till today and all of us in fact both of us have the same ancestry as the Harappans have. So that means you know the ancestry has not changed and then but at the same time in the regional context you know maybe different groups may have you know evolved. Mm. Maybe the morphological they are, they are different maybe you know the because of the climate because of the food habit because of maybe you know other factors. So that variation is always there and then you know later you know people started following different maybe faiths in fact maybe religious beliefs etc. Mm. But all of us have and we have compared you know almost 1400 samples modern samples right from Andaman to Kashmir and from Afghanistan to you know Bengal. And in all the population, we can see the Harappan ancestry, you know, quite clearly. Why do you think it becomes so controversial the moment you talk about Harappans and ancestry? Because, you know, I, I feel both sides are very rigid in their views. And uh, very often, it's, it's the middle path of, of factual analysis that, that should exactly. uh, be, uh, be looked at. See, I think, you know, unnecessarily, you know, uh, people have made it a political issue. Hmm. On the other hand, let me tell you that you know this particular project was started in 2008 and 9 when I excavated the site of Farmana. We were interested in getting DNA from the skeletal remains at Farmana itself so that you know we can talk about the Harappan people, about the composition of the Harappan population, their relation with the contemporary population, etc. So that was our effort, in fact. Suppose we had got DNA from this you know skeletal remains from the site of Farmana and we had published in 2011 or 12 we would have published the same data that you know we are we are presenting now so it is not a you it's know not colored. it is not colored exactly and it is a, a purely you know very highly scientific but there have been so many leaks sir. yeah yeah that, uh, you is, that, know, that is going to happen people saying that you know you See, this is a very, very no no very sensitive sensitive data hmm. so people are bound to say or you know they are bound to make all these different comments we understand that hmm. but let them understand that you know this project was started as independent highly scientific you know project in 2008 and 9 itself are there other dna samples that are out there being looked at now yeah, after yeah. the success we, of this we have no no now we no this is now our beginning we wanted to publish this mm. and publish in a really very high you know uh, ranking scientific journal so that because the papers are you know fully properly evaluated there and once it is published that means it is accepted by the scientific community Secondly, you know, we for the first time, you know, I have brought in, you know, together the genetic scientists from almost 16 different countries and the archaeologists and combined, you know, we have, you know, worked on this particular project. So this is, you know, very important. The topmost guys in the field, like, you know, David Rick is the, you know, he's the topmost, you know, ancient DNA specialist in the world. Hmm. He is a part of this particular exam, you know, exercise. And he has also concluded that. And he is also, you know, part of this, you know, you know, he's author, one of the authors here. Mm. And so there's no denying the in, fact. In the larger study. And you know, let me tell you that, you know, hundreds of analysis have been carried out, which are so expensive. But we wanted to get this done, you know, very scientifically. And the data that we had put forth, that is in public domain. So now. one of the acquisitions, and uh, it has been loosely mentioned, is that this was not part of the larger study because they didn't want it to be, because they didn't agree with this. No, no, no. This is, this is absolutely, you know, not true. Because, you know, it is a part of a much larger studies, of course. Only thing that, you know, that, you know, we have not been successful in getting DNA from, you know, number of skeletal remains. And they wanted Suppose a larger we had, sample? We had, they no. wanted a larger sample for their... Uh, yeah, yeah. They, you know, one of the, you know, uh, arguments is that, you know, sample is very small. But they should understand, you know, the condition is so poor here that, you know, with great difficulties, we have done that. And that is a major science, scientific breakthrough. Mm -hmm. That is very important. And now we know that, you know, what is the, you know, maybe ideal, maybe potential area for the sampling, we know now. So from here, you know, we are, we are moving, of course, for, forward. It is not the end. In fact, this is the beginning of our studies. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, more and more, maybe, you know, at some stage, you know, as we have more samples, who knows, you know, our hypothesis might change. But that is, you know, that is a, you know, proper scientific process. We understand that. The Rakhigari DNA analysis report is just a small but significant breakthrough that helps in our understanding of the Harappans. But as Dr. Shinde himself says, this is just the beginning. The lady at Rakhigari has spoken and revealed a lot about her times. 
but there is so much we don't know. There are hundreds of Harappan sites across the north and west of India and many of them have been lost. It is when you come to a site like this in Lothal, where almost 90% of this once thriving city remains buried, that you realize how much ground there is to cover. <laughs>